Andrew Titley. Andrew is a local rider and obviously knew the course well. Handling the corners better than anyone had in practice and going through the split point in 1 minute 58 seconds. But over the drop off, his feet came out of his pedals and he lost a second or two. Though it could have been much more painful. However, it didn't stop him posting an incredible time of 3 minutes and 8 seconds. That gave him a comfortable win in the juniors. And it wasn't until another local rider, Ian Collins, went off that anyone else got close. Ian's best result had been 14th in the last round, but his split time of 2 minutes 6 seconds was obviously going to be a target for the later riders. Once again, like with the French in the first round of the World Cup, Ian's flowing ride demonstrated how important it is for downhillers to really know the course they're racing, as he finished in a time of 3 minutes 16 seconds. Racing up the echelon, I should expect. As the CD riders started coming through, it became clear just how good those runs were. Stephen Hassel had come eighth in Beth Gellet, but the tight corners caused him to ground and damage his pedals. And with his feet always on the verge of coming out of the cleats, he was unable to maintain full power. However, that didn't prevent him making good air on the drop-off, though not the top 15. Helmet manufacturer. Good ride there as well. Irish rider Robin Seymour has been impressive all season in the cross country and just can't get enough of the racing. So he also gave the downhill a crack. And with 10th in the first two rounds, he was obviously good. His split time in the woods was 2 minutes 21 seconds but a tumble on the corners put him out of the reckoning. Come on, Robin. Come on, Robin. Come on, Robin. Come on, Robin. A powerful final kilometre had him move into third at the end of his run, but he eventually slipped down to 13. The first rider to get close to Collins was Paul Plunkett. His split time of 2 minutes 14 seconds was only 8 seconds outside the leaders. And though he couldn't keep it as smooth in the woods, he blasted into the main arena and took his second top 10 result on the trot with a time of 2 minutes 26 seconds, which also gave him 10th overall in this series. Alistair McLean had looked good through the wooded sections in Scotland when he finished 6th, but he was struggling all the way here constantly having his rhythm broken up by roots and stumps. His split time was 2 minutes 22 seconds and despite his final efforts that took him into 5th when he finished, he was knocked down to 14th by the end. Kona's Chris Horsfield had had top 10 finishes in all three rounds and with the likes of McCroy, Craig, Hemming and Kiffing all missing, he was hoping to get into the final frame. But as with so many of the riders, he seemed to be having to work too hard in the woods to keep up the speed, with the result that he overcooked it on the corners. A split time of 2 minutes 23 was an indication of his problems, and he finally finished in a poor 22nd that meant he slipped out of the top 10 overall. After a poor start to the season, Jason Shackleton had managed to move up to fourth in the standings and was only two points behind Simon Kipling, who was the best placed of the riders competing here. However, with only three results counting, Shackers knew that he needed big points if he was to retain his title, and the second fastest senior split time showed that he was on a good run. But surprisingly, since he's also an elite class cross country rider, he lost time to Collins on the pedalling sections. And though he moved into second, he was six and a half seconds adrift, but for the moment was leading the series. Simon Kipling had similar problems, as his best result was only a fourth in the first round, and he knew that there were a couple of good riders behind him in the standings who could drop a poor result if they had reasonable ones here. With the pressure on, Kippers was also struggling through the tight corners, and despite the third fastest split, he tired badly near the end and could only move into fifth. Not enough for the title, and with riders to come, he was very unlikely to make the podium. Come on, Simon! Hands up the thing and comes across underneath the finish line. 
finishing line at three minutes in... Next down was the winner of the last round in Scotland, John Pennyfather. John is another rider over from Ireland, and though not up to Robin Seymour in the cross country, the downhillers were beginning to take note of him. With a first and a tenth under his belt, he was as likely as any to come away with the title, if he could keep it together here. Taking tight lines on the bend, he clocked up a split time of 2 minutes 7 seconds, which was just a second outside Collins. Though not looking as fast as some over the drop-off, John was picking the quick lines, and his finish time of 3 minutes 18 seconds moved him into second and the lead in the series. As with John, Will Longdon had 37 points from two results coming into this race, and so Pennyfather would be nervously waiting to see if Will could better his time, and thus move into the overall lead. It began to seem that Titley and Collins' times were untouchable and they could have victory today, but the real battle was about the series. Struggling on the corners, Will's split time was a disappointing 2 minutes 20 and he was never going to make up the deficit in the final kilometre, so could only move into 7. Steve Pete had 38 points from his best two rounds to date, so once again only needed to beat Pennyfather to take the overall lead. His split time in the woods was two seconds down on the Irish rider, but he was undoubtedly the fastest over the drop-off, and he made two and a half seconds up in the final kilometre, finishing in a time of three minutes 17 seconds. That was enough to slip ahead of Penny Father in the race and the title hunt. 13, 13 and a half seconds, that is... Steve could only watch and wait as the last rider capable of taking the series paces Richard Thackeray headed down. Richard had 44 points from two results, so with Pete lying second, Richard would need to finish at least fifth to equal his total. Richard's split time of 2 minutes 11 seconds was a second down on Pete's, and the fifth fastest as he too opted for the tight inside line. But slipping out of the pedals cost him vital fractions of a second, and when he crossed the line in fifth, everyone went to the rule book to try and work out the winner. But in the end, it was decided by one of the later riders, Bobby Blake, who took fourth and thus knocked Richard down to sixth. But the fastest rider on the day was Andrew Titley. Um, I didn't have any trouble in the trues. It's just when I came onto the field near the end, I actually clipped out my pedals and sort of went down on the crossbar, which was a bit painful. <laughs> How do you find the course? Um, well, it cut up a lot this morning compared to what it was last night. Like, I felt really good on it last night. This morning, it cut up and I was all over the place, but managed to stay on and went fairly quick. It seemed a bit slow through trees up at top. Like you couldn't get much speed because it were all twists and turns and that, but the bottom bit were fast. Jump up there. All right. right. And you only just out edged out uh, Richard, didn't you? Yeah, only just a bit unlucky, but... That's the way it's downhilling, though, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's what makes it exciting. It helps get nerves up, out pressures, and that one actual run. In the end, it could hardly have been closer amongst the medal winners, though Jason McCoy still held on to fourth despite only two races.